Thank you so much. And uh, we're going to start the section of the playbooks. This is the first ever uh, live recorded session that we do here uh, at, the, at, the World Human, at the World Human with the Hispanic Leadership Summit. This will be a live recorded podcast, a podcast a la Latina. No. We're going to do it again because we're recording. <laughs> this is the first ever live recorded podcast that we do here at the Hispanic Leadership Summit. And this is a podcast a la Latina. A la Latina. <laughs> the playbook to succeed being your authentic self. I'm Claudia Romo Edelman. And I'm Cynthia Kleinbaum Milner. And this is a podcast to make sure that every Latina can succeed and do that being their authentic self. Today, Cynthia, we have an incredible panel. Yes. Wait, I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> Edit. Edit. <laughs> Today, this Cynthia, we have an incredible <laughs> panel. We have Oh, I can't, Christina, I can't pronounce your last name. You okay, we're going to start. Yes. <laughs> no, to, can you, today, can you introduce Christina? Today we have an incredible panel. Why did we start this podcast? We started this podcast because there are 9% of Americans are Latino women. And only 1% are at the top of corporate America. And when we asked ourselves and we did research on why this is happening, we found that the three root causes can be solved with the right podcast. Number one, there are stereotypes around our ability to work and to climb the ladder. People think that because English is not our first language, maybe we're not that smart, or because we're loud, we're not serious enough, or because we also want to be focused in our family, we cannot be focused on work. The second thing is we don't have networks of people that have walked this path before that can tell us how to do it. And the third thing is we don't have role models that are visible. So with this podcast, we are putting the role models in a visible platform and we are asking them, how did you get to the top? What was your playbook? Give it to the next generation so they can do it in half the time. <laughs> and we want to do it Latino style, a la Latina. So this, this session today, this podcast, is going to be hearing from incredible leaders. And I'm going to start asking them three questions. Number one, what is your championship as a Latina and how have you made it? Number two, what are the things that we need to flip the script? What is the script that has been going so wrong that we have to flip? And number three, from the playbook that we have had from the podcast, A La Latina, which is the one that you identify the most? We're going to start with Christina. Thank you, Claudia and Cynthia, for having me. So, super excited to be on this amazing podcast, which we're all cheering for. Um, so... What has worked is really setting high goals and just really trying to reach the North Star. Having that North Star and knowing where you're headed or at least where you want to end is really what has driven me. Um, what you flip is just really dismissifying the myths that are out there, just not really believing in what everyone else tells you, but really truly believing in yourself and that you can make it. That would be me. Well, you know, first, first and foremost, it's being able to have a true understanding of your core needs and values. And now that's been my biggest thing for myself and for everyone else that I, comes around me in my orbit. Having a clear understanding of your core values will really help you have that career success and progression. And so for me, I, I, know, that I, know, I know that I have three, three clear things. And the first and foremost is making sure that I stay true to them and that... Um, Staying true to my values, which is. No worries. Yeah. Edit. Let's edit, edit, edit this edit, piece. Edit. No worries. Take a break. <laughs> No, staying true to your core values. You know, when you ask a lot of individuals, and now I'd like to ask you, raise your hand if, you ever, if you've ever felt stuck in your career. Right? Number two, raise your hand if you are still working in the degree that you majored in. That's a lot less hands. So that ties back to understanding your own core needs and your values when it comes to career alignment and purpose. 
The next thing is making it, you know, Christina just, just said it. One, one of the things fundamental that is for me is making sure that I remain resilient. I grew up in the Rio Grande Valley, all around the valley, you have a lot of palm trees, right? And so one of the things that we know is true when the hurricanes come, a lot of things are shattered, but the last thing standing is what? The palm trees. My friends, mis Latinos, we are like those palm trees. We are resilient and we have to remember that. Venga, Patricia. I am also first generation. I am from an Argentinian father, Uruguayan mother. And I didn't really uh, embrace my Latinaness. I didn't even know I was Latina until I went to college, where <laughs> I went, I'm sure a lot of us can relate who have come to this country, where I went to uh, Middlebury College, which was a very homogeneous school in Vermont. And my first day there, I got a welcome, welcome minorities, um, welcome student of color, like a little postcard. And I was like, ¿Y esto? <laughs> and I literally went to the window and I said, I'm sorry, you must have the wrong student. And she looked me up and she said, nope, this is you, right? And so that started kind of my self-awareness. And fast forward to when I entered into corporate America, because my parents uh, did not have corporate careers, I didn't have a playbook. I did not know the rules of engagement. And so I spent the first two to three years really kind of being a shell of myself, more quiet, more reserved, observing. What is the power dynamic in this room? Because when I walked into the room, and this was the late 90s, nobody looked like me. I was certainly, I was usually the only woman in the room, certainly the only woman of color. And so what I did very quickly, which is what we've been talking about, which is what all of us have in us, is you learn to adapt, you learn to see the white space, right? We're flexible, and you lean on your charisma, you lean on your self-deprecating humor, you lean on your vibrancy, and that is how, what has served me really, really well as, as I've progressed in my career. Uh, press, press, press. I want to share, I want Claudia and I to share why we started this podcast, what personally we felt uh, that really made us dedicate this amount of time and, and the passion that I'm sure you can see that we have. In my case, I was back then, it was about a year and a half ago, I was working at Walmart and I was a vice president. And for anyone here that has worked at Walmart or knows somebody at Walmart, vice president is not very senior, it's a little bit senior. I was the most senior Latina in the corporate side of, of, um, of Walmart. And I didn't feel like I had a role model to aspire to become. And I met an employee who worked in an operations role. And she saw me and she asked me, I, I want your path. How can I get to, to, to be in the corporate world? And the only answer that I didn't give her, but I had it in my mind was, I was lucky enough to be accepted to Harvard. So if we expect that every Latina that makes it to corporate at Walmart has to come from Harvard, we're never gonna get to the 9%. So I made it my mission to enable every Latina in Walmart to have the playbook to get to VP and beyond, which I think it's a very different story than yours, so I let you tell yours. What the data was saying was very clear. 76% of Latinos cannot be themselves at the workplace. So if you're Jorge, you come to work and you have to pretend to be George. And you leave yourself at home and you come to work with someone you don't even know. And that has dramatic consequences for everybody. It has dramatic consequences for us because we cannot be our best selves. And when you're not your, your full self, you cannot perform as good. Uh, number two, the, the reality is that when you're suppressing the self, you're doing little cuts to the soul every day. You're bleeding every time that you have to become someone you're not, to deny who you truly are, to hide your identity. And that has dramatic consequences also for companies because you have a revolving door. And because migration is so controlled, Latinos are so young, there's absolutely no way that you can survive without Latinos. You want to be able to show leg and say, hey, stay here. You can be yourself here. So people can actually make a choice of a place where they can be. Otherwise, you're going to go to a place where you can be Jorge 
and not pretend to be George. And so what we noticed is that those people that were making it, which by the way is only 35 women in the C-suite of the Fortune 500 company, we don't have enough women to fill off a podcast for a year. So we really need to make sure that we're equipping and we're laser focused on what is it that we can do to make sure that we're equipping women not with their passion and their hard work because we, have the, because we know they have it. It is with the playbooks. We don't come with manuals. For many of us, this is the first time that we have someone in our family that is getting in a corporate setting. No one is telling you this is the, play, the way to play it. And we don't have the networks either. And we don't have the inspiration, the role models to say, if she makes it, I can make it. So we decided to create a podcast called A La Latina, the playbook to succeed, be your authentic selves, because we know that with a playbook, we can succeed and do it by being our authentic selves. One of the techniques that we're using, and we have, uh, very, we're very close to closing our season number one, and we have, we have uh, interviewed 12 of the most important Latinas in corporate America, and they, all of them, had shared some of the very same things. All of them have made it pretty much with the same, you know, like with the same experience. None of them had a playbook. We took all their experiences, compared it to research, and put up a playbook for you. But one of the techniques that we use in the podcast, which I think that we referred before, is called flip the script. Because we think that Latinas have been playing the script of someone else. The script of a gritona, the script of a loud person, the script of the stereotypes that people have of us, which are negative, like majority negative and related to our physical attributes. Uh, beautiful, sexy, loud, and not about our hardworking and incredible uh, tenacious self going there. So Cynthia and I would like to talk to you about the three most common unconscious stereotypes that are felt in corporate America for Latinas. And then we're going to start demystifying them, one of them. And then we're going to share with you the playbook and we're going to get reactions. Cynthia. The first one, which I referenced a little bit before, it's familismo. The, the fact that we have an expectation, our families have an expectation, but we have an expectation of ourselves that we want to be caregivers. We want to be present with our families. And that sometimes means that we take ourselves out of the race way before we even have kids or, or a family. We're like, oh, maybe 15 years from now, I'm going to want to have a kid, so I'm not going to ask for that promotion. Uh, or somebody else makes that decision for us. And the opposite is true. Being somebody that cares about your team as if they are your family is actually how people want to be led today. In fact, today we released the last episode with a guest with Nanette Cosero, who was the president of the vaccines division at Pfizer. And she said that it was her approach to team leadership as a Latina, the reason why she was able to lead a very cross-functional global team of people under a lot of, of stress to develop the COVID vaccine in record time because she was leading a la Latina. Being like familismo is what led her to, to, to succeed, not the opposite. Familismo. Flipping the script is as simple like flipping stereotypes and exchanging with facts, taking uh, biases and exchanging with values taking weaknesses and see them as strengths. And those are true facts and values that can actually transform the way in, you, in which you see the cultural nuances of Latinos, particularly uh, Latinas in the corporate world. Let me tell you about my most common and favorite unconscious stereotype for Latinas in the workplace. Accentism. Oy. Accentism, which is something that is attract, like it's, it's labeled in every one of, uh, of the people that we interviewed. Accentism is associated in the unconscious bias. I'm not blaming it on everybody. It's on the brain. Accentism is associated with competence. If you have an accent, you're not competent. If you have an accent, you're not as intelligent. Uh, if you have an accent, probably you don't belong. So those three things, what cause in Latinas is a sense of self-confidence. I don't want to speak because I feel judged. 
I don't want to speak because people told me I don't, I, like they don't understand me. And they look at me and question my competence and my performance. And so I stop talking. I stop, I, I deny my visibility, which has consequences on my career growth. So the invitation for Flip the Script is from accentism to the reality, which is bilingualism. When you have an accent, it means you speak two languages. And when you speak two languages, you can talk to two different groups of people, or maybe three, or maybe four. And what that happens is that it makes you more prone to be able to do negotiation. And you're more prone to be great at global deals. And you're more prone to be able to, uh, the brain when you speak two languages, as you know, is bicultural. So you're culturally more attuned and you're more empathic. And not only that, guess what? At the brain level, as Debbie would say from, you know, like from the health perspective, when you're, when you're bilingual, you're more at Adaptable. Your brain is more flexible. You are able to navigate uncertainty better. So, I, ladies and gentlemen, flipping the script from accentism to bilingualism and biculturalism, that will give us the power that we need. And with those two unconscious biases, we want to ask our audiences about the, what are the flipping the script situations that you have felt in your careers where you have the opportunity to say, I was, I was playing the script or Latinas are giving this script, but we can flip it this way. Either a personal anecdote a personal story, or some data like Marianne might share? Well, first and foremost, I think, oh, thank you. First and foremost, I think it's to understand what the scripts are, right? Because Claudia is absolutely right. You know, we're talking about familismo, do we understand what familismo is, what that cultural script is, and what that means to us, and how it really does affect our behaviors and our choices. Familismo is the loyalty that we have to our families. So many times, people don't take that promotion. Why? Because they don't want to leave the family. They don't want to move out of state. They may not want to leave out of state for college. So these are the things that we need to be able to understand to flip the script and understand why we're doing it. So for myself, I can tell you that, yeah, Family, was, fa family is very important to me, but so is my career. And can we do both? Absolutely. Another cultural script is respect. We value the concept of respect so much, it's hard for us to push back, talk back, disagree. And when you make it to corporate America at the table, does that translate? Absolutely not. It doesn't, because what does the boss expect you to do? To push back. Right? to challenge orthodoxies, and we're not doing that right now. And that has been my biggest lesson, lesson being an entrepreneur, being at a table, being the only Latina in my space for outplacement services. It's been tough, but learning those cultural scripts and knowing how to flip them will change your trajectory. Great, Patricia? Mike. Okay, I love that we're talking about this because there are so many stereotypes. You guys hit on a couple. I'll share a story about, first of all, I, I hire people that have accents because of that very reason. To me, it's a signal that you speak more than one language, which means your aperture is larger, um, which means your brain is, is, is developing differently. When my kids learn how to speak, uh, they, I would notice that they would start speaking a certain language. If they didn't get the response that they were looking for or were not being paid attention to, they would switch, right? And to me, that is you have multiple strategies in your toolkit um, and that multifaceted nature just again it's an edge and that's why we have to flip it um, another one I've heard all the time is we're emotional right um, I think that is a positive we are passionate we have a point of view we have conviction and if we are able to articulate our ideas uh, in an inspiring way that is leadership so that we flip as well the family one I fell into a hundred percent because when I was coming up the leaders I had to look up to were very stoic, right? They didn't display a lot of emotion. So they, no one talked about family. And it was essentially you were giving, you know, you weren't dedicated enough to your work. And so what I have learned now is I am a good manager and leader because I am family oriented. I speak about my, I have four children. I speak about them on every occasion I can. The, the values that I have, I lead with transparency, with vulnerability, what I tell my kids, and it, it, it translates to work, is that my job is to provide the environment for you to feel safe, to feel heard, to feel valued, and the context for you to be the best version of yourself. And that has made me a better leader because I lean into all of the family orientation that we have. For the young Latinas, take it on, let's go, Christina. So I'll, I'll speak to the family um, as well. So I have two boys that I raised, and I can tell you that it, it's true, right? That myth is that we can't do both and that we fall into that trap. But the biggest impact that I had 
on someone who was on my team not too long ago was because I brought my full self to self and to work, and I spoke of being a mother and raising kids and having them throughout my career journey, um, gave this person who worked for me the courage that she had been holding back for five months to come and tell me that she was expecting. She was so worried about what the reaction would be that she literally kept it to herself, delaying the news as much as possible because she never had a mother as a manager. And so in her mind and in her head was, what is going to happen to me? How is this going to be taken? And how do I navigate through that? And the fact that she heard me talk about my kids, talk about the fact that I had a family, that I was able to have a career, that I was able to manage both of them, gave her the courage to actually come up and say it. And shakingly, right? And I got up and gave her the biggest hug and congratulated her, and she just started crying. Mm -hmm. And that's when she told me, I have been needing to say this for so long because no one even sitting around her knew it. And that is how bringing those values that we're talking about impacts what you do every day, but also helps the next generation know that we can change our path. As, as Claudia mentioned, we were able to boil down everything that we learned in 12 episodes to 10 tips. And we share them with our guests. And I... If we can put the slide of the 10 uh, items on the playbook, if we have that, that would be awesome. Otherwise, no problem, amigo, we move on. Okay, Cynthia, uh, let's go. Okay, Maybe now, we don't have that. Now you see why I said I can't pronounce your last name, Christina, right? <laughs> Okay, we'll do it. Um, do we have no, the, we don't have them. We don't no. have the playbook. Okay. We're going to read them, yeah. Okay, cool. So we, we're going to read a tip, and we're going to ask our guests to tell us if it resonates with them and, and share a story that supports this. What, the first tip is embracing your authenticity, because your cultural perspective and your background make you an invaluable asset, because when you bring somebody that is different, then the conversation advances. Christina, do you want to tell us what you think about this? So I couldn't agree with it more, um, so much so that when you share that playbook list um, and embrace your authenticity was number one, I was kind of curious, and I Googled it, and it's the number one searched word in the Webster Dictionary for this year. Mm -hmm. And I think that says a lot, right? Because it says that we are all seeking truth. We're all seeking to know what real is. And that's what that first item on your playbook is. It's about how do you come through as being real and for people to trust you as a result of it. Um, I will tell you that I started my career absolutely not embracing my authenticity. I remember specifically the first few roles that I had, I was the youngest in the room, the only woman in the room, Patricia, I feel you. Um, I was the, the, the only one that really looked like me. And I really literally spent hours agonizing over how I'm going to fit in. I would dress differently. I, was, I got haircuts to try to match what my image is supposed to be. I started wearing glasses instead of my contacts. It was like literally anything to kind of fit in. And then one day it just, it just hit me. I, it's just not working because it, it actually did not help at all. <laughs> so then it was, it came, one, I came a day that I just said, you know what, I am who I am. And by being able to embrace my multiculturalism, my multilingualism in everything that I did completely changed the path and how I showed up, how I spoke up, the items and the ideas that I had to contribute came from that experience and made and, and truly showcased to me what that is to be authentic at work and doing it. And doing it regardless of how others are judging you. And I just have to say that 
what we learn at the Decalogue, the 10 items on the playbook that we heard from all the speakers that we had in the first season of A La Latina, the most common, the highest ranked one was this one, embrace your authentic self. We have a tendency to try not to embrace our authentic self because we think that that's a better path to growth. Let me tell you, it's not. People smell it. People catch it when you're pretending you're not, and then you don't become your better self. And the question is, what does that mean? How do you embrace your better self? And I think that having an understanding of, of how do you translate that so that you guys, young Latinas, uh, that want to make it in half the time as we have done it with half the bruises, you can actually start translating that. Patricia. Do you want to comment on embracing your authentic self? Okay, the item number two on the playbook is build your reputation. We heard that again and again. We work hard, but we don't build our reputation. We're bad at self-advocacy. We're not self-promoting. We're not raising your, our hand, and we're people not know, not know, don't know our don't notice our our performance. So it is really important that we know how important it is to work hard, but also show it. And building your reputation means corporate, uh, getting, getting corporate training or getting speaking training so that you can actually elevate your profile. Item number three. This one, really quickly, this one, I, this, one's, this one resonated with me. First of all, all 10, you guys, when, we get, when you get this, laminate it, put it in your office, hand it out. I mean, it's, these are amazing. This is the playbook that I didn't have, that none of us had. The build your reputation really resonated with me for a couple reasons, and I'll share a quick anecdote. When I joined Google three years ago, I also am usually the either most senior Latina or only Latina, and so my natural inclination when I go into a new organization is where is my tribe? Where are my people? Where are the organizations I can lean into? How do I mentor? I had a conversation with Michael Munez, who is our global DEI uh, marketing lead, and he was like, okay, time out. He was like, Google is one of the most complex organizations you are gonna be a part of. The single most important thing that you can do for Latinas is to do the job that you were hired to do exceptionally well. Because you can't help anyone if you're not here. And it was such a moment of like, because we take so much on, do your job well, add value, and then you can spread the wealth and you can pay it forward. Because believe it or not, many Latinas think that to get promoted, you go and ask for the promotion. And we've been hearing consistently that you don't ask for the promotion. You become the go-to person that solves problems and that gets you the promotion, right? Okay, next one. We also heard a ton about mentorship and sponsorship. And again, it's not a... Um, an idea that we are raised with. The fact that when you get to a job, you have to kind of keep an eye on who is going places, and I'm gonna attach myself to that person, So when, and I'm gonna become the problem solver for that person, so when that person goes to the next level, they take me with them. Or the, the idea of a mentor who you can actually go and ask for help, questions like how to become a good mentee. So the idea of mentorship and sponsorship has come up over and over again. I don't know if Christina or Patricia want to answer this one. I can answer it, Patricia, maybe both of us. Um, so huge, huge game changer. But in the sense that, at least in my career, I have been someone's mentee, I have been sponsored, and that has played a huge role in my career investment especially the sponsorship piece, because that is the person who speaks of you when you're not in the room. It's the person that comes back to you and brings opportunities forward that they know will match your skill sets and gives you that push to go for it. Similarly, and because of my experience in that, I have also been a sponsor of younger Latinas and younger Latinos and also a mentor a host of, of uh, young talent, right? Because again, if they don't see themselves represented, they don't know how to move forward. And so by us sharing our journey, sharing our experience, giving them a helping hand, hand to move forward is really all that we can do to pay it back and lift the next generation forward so that they don't have to struggle as much as we did in order to figure it out. Okay, with podcasters, we can finish this in two minutes. Let's go through the 10. Patricia. Uh, 
I, I, I did not get my first mentor until I was 45 years old. So the takeaway is it's never too late. I'm sure I had spent uh, sponsors. I wouldn't be here if I didn't. I did not have the playbook. I did not know what mentorship was. I didn't know how to ask for it. And when, my, when I was the CMO of Shazam and my CEO said, I think it would be great for Lauren to mentor you because she was the only woman in the board, I was like, great. I don't know what that means. What do I, do I say something to her? How does this work, right? And so my, my advice is be intentional. Pick someone, to your point, who has, has accomplished things that you look up to, who has similar values, and then ask them. Use the language to say, will you mentor me? Make sure you're giving something back. I will come with X, Y, and Z. Here's what I hope to get out of it. Um, and, and just use, be your own advocate, because I certainly did not know that that was a thing, and it is game-changing when it comes to your career. And so we gave you the first three of the playbook of 10 because we are podcasters. We're going to be able to finish this in one minute. What we're going to do is Cynthia and I are going to read the 10 um, each, each items in the playbook. And then you're going to listen to the podcast a la Latina. And then you're going to get all the advice that you need. Here is the playbook to succeed being your authentic self. As we said, number one, embrace your authenticity. Embrace, embrace your authenticity. Number two, build your reputation. Number three, proactive mentorship and sponsorship. Number four, ambitious goal setting. Number five, business acumen and strategic moves. Number six, networking and relationship building. Number seven, continuous learning and adaptability. Number eight, feedback as a growth loop. And number nine, calculated risk taking. And number 10, self-discovery and reflection. What we know is that we have 10 things in a playbook, a flip the script uh, methodology that can help all Latinas, and a podcast where we can highlight the voices of the people that have made it. Thank you so much for having us, and I, we hope that you can listen to the podcast A La Latina. <laughs> We have to go.